Hey there, beautiful people. It's Pastor Dante here, and I'm so excited that you're back for another week of Redo. Remember, I believe that God is about to give you another chance, another opportunity to get it right. Don't waste this time. God is giving you vision for this season, for what you are about to be, do, have in the next season. But listen, I wasn't feeling my best this week. I just want to be perfectly, totally honest with you. So I, I, I'm going to chill out this week, but I'm so grateful, man, that I have have sons. The Bible says, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are sons in the quiver of their father. Listen, and I'm so grateful for this next son that's coming out. In fact, do me a favor, just put your hands together all over the building. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go uh, relax, and I'm going to call my son to help me come finish this. Oh, ho ho hold on one second. Um, Kevin! How'd I get here? All right. Well, thanks, Pop. Hey there, beautiful people. It is Pastor Kevin with God Chasers Community Church, and today is your day for a redo. Hey there, beautiful people. It's Pastor Kevin with God Chasers, and today you get a redo. I'm so excited to be here with you. Uh, if you've been uh, with us the last couple of weeks with this series, they have been incredible and inspiring. Our pastor, our apostle, Dante Banks, is incredible. Do me a favor. Go to his timeline right now and just encourage the man of God. Let him know that he's blessing you. Let him know that he's doing an incredible job during this crazy time that we're going through right now with COVID. Uh, God giving us an incredible covering love on him bless him today because he is our leader and he deserves it uh, I, I, and I'm gonna just keep going on on this track with redo uh, go with me go with me to your Bibles into your you version apps whatever you have let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 5 here we go it says this he who was seated on the throne said I am making everything new I'm gonna say that again he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Today, I want to share with you from the thought, from the title, starting from scratch. Do me a favor, put that in the comments, put that on your timeline, whatever you have, put some hearts along with it. Starting from scratch. Amen. Amen. So think about this. The idiom, the thought, the term starting from scratch, it truly means to begin or to begin again from beginning to embark on something without any preparation. Hallelujah. Any preparation, any knowledge or or any type of advantage. It literally means to start without anything. To start a thing without anything. And, and, and you usually hear this term from people who have started something and something may have happened, maybe some type of bankruptcy or, or a divorce or something that was traumatic, and they now have to start over again. Uh, uh, and, and this season and at this time, I came by to tell you that what God desires to do in your life during this season is to give you a redo and have you start from scratch. Do me a favor. I need you to high five somebody right next to you and just tell them we're starting from scratch. We're starting from scratch. That was the wrong neighbor. Talk to your other neighbor. Maybe you need to text somebody. Tell them we need to start 
from scratch. And hear me, when you start all over again, nobody can be against you, hear me, because if God be for you, he is more than the world that can be against you. And, and, and hear me, you might be starting from scratch and you don't have the degree, Hallelujah. You may not have any finances. Hallelujah. You may not have any friends to help you with this, uh, but God still wants you to start from scratch. Now, hear me on this. When you start from scratch, hear me. When you start from scratch and you don't have any friends, I'm not saying you don't need anybody, but what I'm saying is that what God desires to do in your life, no one can take credit for. Hallelujah. No one can take credit for or the glory for what God is about to do in your life. No one can take credit for uh, for this. Hear me. Uh, so if, if you're going to start from scratch, there are a few things I need you to know and to understand so that you can be prepared for this next season that God is preparing you for. And the first thing I need you to understand is you need to see it. Say that with me. See it. You need to see it. Uh, uh, go with me to Joel chapter 2 verse 28. I'm going to pull it from right here. Uh, here we go. Yeah, it says it like this, and it and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Hear, hear me right now. Uh, God has a question for you. Do you see what he sees? Hallelujah. Do you see what he sees? See, the problem that some of us have is that we are looking at other people's lives and we are hoping and wishing our lives can look like that. We're looking at their jobs. We're looking at their ministries. We're looking at their businesses. We're looking at their churches. And we're saying, man, I want that right there. But the problem is you need to be able to see exactly what God has for you. Hear me. It doesn't matter how many people show up to the party first because you have to understand what God has for you is truly just for you. Let me, let me break it down like this. Do you remember that prophet Samuel in the Old Testament? Hallelujah. One day he goes to the house of Jesse. Jesse has eight sons. And when he goes to the house of Jesse, he is looking for the next king, the next king, because God has to start from scratch because the old king messed up. He's got to start from scratch and get him a new king, a man after his own heart. So he goes to the house of Jesse and he sees the first seven, count them, seven sons. And when he's sitting there looking at all of them, the oil doesn't pour. Hallelujah. The oil doesn't pour on any of them. Hallelujah. I said the oil doesn't pour. Hear me. It doesn't matter how many people get to the party first if the oil of the poor it wasn't for them because there's somebody else there's somebody else that God is waiting for to show up so that the oil can pour so hear me so he asked Jesse do you have another son and he says yes I do the little shepherd boy in the back but surely you don't want him and he says no bring him here because he's the one I believe God is calling and we will not stand we will not sit down until he gets here. Hear me right now. Uh, people will not be able to sit down until you show up. As a matter of fact, when you show up, people will always, already be standing up prepared for your arrival. Hallelujah. People will already be there prepared for your arrival. And when David came into the building, the oil poured. Hallelujah. Well, I said when David came in, when you come in, when you show up to the place of purpose that God has for you, the oil will Pour. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to text somebody say the oil is about to pour. The oil is about to pour. The oil is about to pour. <laughs> so understand me. Understand this. You have to see it. You have to see what God is preparing you for. You have to have a vision for the future. The Bible says that uh, without a vision, my people perish. Hear me. Without a vision, my people perish. I truly believe that means that if you don't see what God sees for you, then you will perish. You yourself, you might not die physically, but in yourself, you will die emotionally. And hear me, there's some of you right now, you've been feeling like you're dead emotionally and dead in this life because you're not seeing your life, you're seeing somebody else's life. But in this season, in this time, you need to see it. See what God has for you. Hallelujah. And then next, check this out. Not only do you need to see it, but you also need to scribble it. 
Hallelujah. Yeah, you need to scribble it. I need some help from my man Habakkuk. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Let me get that from right here. Hold on. Uh, uh, here we go. It says it like this. And the Lord answered me. Write the vision, glory to God. Make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, hear me. Whenever you go to a doctor's office, uh, and you, if, you, if you watch the doctor write down your diagnosis or write down the prescription that you need, hallelujah, check this out. You might not be able to understand what he or she is writing. It looks like what they call chicken scratch to you, right? It looks like chicken scratch to you, but to that doctor, it makes perfect sense. Woo, Jesus. Did you miss that? You may have missed that. Let me say that again. When a doctor writes down your diagnosis or your prescription on that piece of paper, it may not make sense to you, but it makes perfect sense to them. Hear me, in this season, God is going to have you begin to scribble out the vision that he allowed you to see. And guess what? To the wrong people, it may not make sense. But in this season, we're going to get what we call a God chasers, the right they. Say that with me. You need the right they and the right they will be able to run with what you wrote. Ah, hear me. They will be able to run with what you wrote. See, the reason why you're seeing this right now and the reason why you are a part of God Chasers right now is because of our pastor, our apostle, Dante Banks. If you don't look at this thing he has called Evernote, he has a list of things that God Chasers uh, was to become based off the information God downloaded into his heart and mind. And now you're watching. And when you come back to the house of God, you're sitting in the very thing that he saw. And, and Seven years ago, if you were to meet him, this may not have made any sense to you. It may not make any sense why it's dark in the house. It may not make any sense why it's so loud in here. It may not make any sense to you why he's so passionate about this, why we give away food and why we do all these things. But, but, but hear me, it wasn't for those people, but we have the right thing. Let me just stop right now and just thank God for all the right things, the right directors, the right staff members, the right volunteers, the right musicians, the right people who make God chasers happen. Without you, none of this is possible. Possible. We have the right thing. Why? Because he wrote it, our pastor wrote it, and we run with it. Oh, God. And in this season, you need some people like that, that when you scribble it, you have the people who can run with it. They'll run to the, the highways and byways. They'll run and sell your product. They'll run and tell people. They'll post it on their wall. And they'll keep posting it on the wall because they believe in what God showed you and what you wrote down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say this out loud. Say, I'm going to scribble it. I'm going to scribble it. And I'll say it again. Say, I'm going to scribble it. I see some of y'all right now already scribbling stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep scribbling and don't hold back. So not only do you need to see it, and not only do you need to scribble it, help me preach, uh, you also need to speak it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to speak it. Uh, I, need, I need one more scripture to help me out. Uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 17. I'm going to pull it from right here. Ah, here we go. It says it like this. Speak those things that are not as though they were. Let me say that again. Speak those things, hallelujah, that are not as though they were. Let me ask you a question. Do you have the faith to speak what God showed you and what you wrote down? Uh, uh, you have to be able to speak what God is sharing with you in the season. Why? Because when you open your mouth, you look like God. Ah, uh, here we go. Because in the beginning, <laughs> it says that God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and all that. And then he says, let there, he said this, let there be life. Because he understood that I form my world with my words. You may have heard PD say that a few times here, that we form our world with our words. And some of you, the reason why you're seeing what you're seeing right now in your life is because you have formed it with your words. Woo, Jesus. But I, I dare you in this season to change your speech. I dare you in this season to change your language. I dare you in this season to change your dialect and to begin to speak well of the Lord. Begin to speak well of your life. Begin to speak well of your children and your marriage. Begin to speak well of your business and your job. The reason why you are seeing what you're seeing is because of what you spoke. But I guarantee you, when you begin to change your language, everything around you will, be, will begin to change. Say this out loud. I'm going to speak it. 
I'm going to speak it. I'm going to speak it. Hear me. Uh, there's plenty of times in the Bible, hallelujah, that you will see somebody speaking something into existence. Uh, we heard Petey talk about this a few weeks ago, this man named Ezekiel. God came to him and said, hey, hey, Ezekiel, can these bones live? And he responded to God and said, only you know, God. Only you know. And he said, speak to those bones and give them life. Oh, Jesus, speak to them. When you speak over these dead places, when you speak, I feel the Holy Ghost, when you speak over these dead moments in your life, when you speak over that dead dream, when you speak over that dead marriage, when you speak over that dead job, when you speak over those over, over those not, uh, those dead children, they're not, they're not dead physically, but they're dead on the inside. They have nothing but apathy on the inside. Of when you speak over these dead places, you will see these things come to life, and it will look like starting from scratch. Oh, he may right now this is your season for a redo and you need to see it you need to scribble it and then right now you need to speak it speak over it you have life and death in the power of your tongue but I I, 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 I push you I instigate you to speaking life over your own life speak life over your finances hallelujah speak life over your job speak life right now over this ministry speak life over everything that God has placed on your hand and understand and hear me, hear me, you get a redo. You get to start from scratch. Now, hear me, check this out, check this out. See, this day, May 31st, 2020, is what we call Pentecost Sunday. It's 50 days, it's 50 days after Easter, after the resurrection of Christ, but it's also what they call the Feast of Weeks in the Jewish culture, right? Uh, so this is a festival time for the Jewish people. But understand, Pentecost in Acts 2, hear me, uh, was a time when the Holy Spirit came from the heavens and, and, and birthed the church. That's right, the Big C Church was birthed birth on Pentecost Sunday. Today is the birthday of the Global Big C Church. This is the day where God decided I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to start all over again, and I'm going to use men who do not have degrees. Whoa, God! I'm going to use women who won't, who will not be accepted by men, but they'll be accepted by other women and other people. I'm going to use people who don't have degrees or anything, and I will use them to advance the kingdom of God. Let me tell you right now, this is the day that God is birthing with in you something that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and neither has it entered into the heart of men what God desires to do through you. This is your season. This is your birthing season. Hallelujah. This is your birthing season to birth the vision, the mission, the ministry, the business, the book, the script, whatever it is. You get to birth that thing and God is going to start from scratch. Hallelujah. He's going to start from scratch. Help, let him help you in this season. Allow the Holy Spirit to help you and give you the inspiration you need to start from scratch. Stop thinking that you need all these things to be successful. All you need is God. All you need is Jesus. All you need is the Holy Ghost. And you are successful. Not that you will be successful, but if you have these three things, you already are successful. Hear me, the best chefs in the world, hallelujah, they, they, <laughs> the best chefs in the world know how to cook starting from scratch. They start with nothing and they make something. Glory to God. They start with nothing. They start with all these different ingredients that if you eat them by themselves, they taste terrible. But when you put them together, when you put them together, they taste wonderful. Hear me. Chefs don't use boxes. They don't use pre-made things. They, they, when, you, when you see a, a really good chef, they start from scratch and then they put it all together and they put, they put their heart and their passion into it. And then you get the taste, the end result of their Passion, hear me, in this season, in this season, right now, this is the season for you to start from scratch. Hear me, start from scratch. You get a redo. Yeah, your business may have failed, it's okay, you get a redo. Yes, your prior, your prior marriage may have failed, but it's okay, you get a redo. Yeah, it may not work at the other church, it's okay, but today, you get a redo. Hear me right now, you get a redo, and you don't get to do it by yourself, no. You have the Holy Ghost with you. The Holy Spirit is with you for this redo. Help me right now. I, if you if you are here for the first time or this is your thousandth time here at God Chasers, hear me. We love you. We want to be a part of your life. We want to be a part of your family's life. And hear me. If you feel like you got to start all over again, that's fine. We want to help you start from scratch. I want you to say this prayer with me. Say this prayer with me. If you're saying it uh, for the first time or the thousandth time, it doesn't matter. But we believe you get to start from scratch. You don't need to be perfect. 
You just got to be available. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and change my heart. Come into my life and change my life. Father, I need a redo. Father, I'm starting from scratch. I need you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, uh, you said it for the thousandth time, and you, and you, and you, but today you mean it. Today you say, PK, I'm starting from scratch. I need a redo today. I really mean it. I need Jesus in my life. I want to get this thing right. Do me a favor. In, 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 in the comments right now, in the comments right now, just say, hey, I'm starting from scratch. I'm starting from scratch. I am starting from scratch. I am starting from scratch. I am starting from scratch. Hallelujah. Today is the day you get to start over again. You get to start over again. You, you, hear me, you, I'm talking to you, young man. I'm talking to you, young lady. You get to start all over again. And hear me, hear me. Let's say you, uh, uh, you're you looking for a church home. Hear me, our pastors are the best pastors this side of the cosmos, amen? I love my pastors, Dante and Tabitha Bank. They are incredible. I've been here for seven years since, since the very first day of God Chasers. I've been here, hear me, when they started from scratch. Hallelujah, I've been here, and I can tell you this is an incredible church. I love this church, and we would love to have you a part of this body. We would love to have you a part of this family. So if you if you want to come home, if you want to come home today, put in the chat right now, put in the comments right now, say, I'm home. This is my home. I'm home. This is my home. I'm home. This is my home. Hallelujah. And, and, and what if our charisma ministers, hey, charisma, uh, they'll be reaching out to you to pray with you and to welcome you into the body. Hey, God chasers and friends and visitors, we love you. I hope that this message has blessed you. Um, we miss you guys. We'll see you guys very, very soon. But until then, you get a redo today. You get to start from scratch.